How's it going ladies and gents and welcome back to the channel. So happy Tuesdays everybody and I hope you guys are having a good day today. So I'm Bragster and I create content, anything Yu-Gi-Oh! and everything Yu-Gi-Oh! So today we are gonna talk about um, the archetype for Despia since it's almost end of the month and we, we almost have a new content that's gonna be coming to us by May 9. Yes, you heard that right. With the new updates uh, upcoming, I'm pretty sure we have new packs that's going to be released in Master Duels. Before everything else happens, um, here is the recap for all the Despia decks that I've created. So let's get into Master Duels and check the decks out. And let's categorize the decks on some criteria if ever they are still useful for um, Master Duels for Platinum. So first and foremost, we are going to tackle the first deck that we ever created in Master Duels on its release. This is the Despia Dark Lords that we created. Basically, the thing that I've changed here is Super Poly, since Super Poly is much better and more efficient in clearing boards on your opponent's side of the field. So here is the deck, and this is Despia Dark Lords. Despia Dark Lords in general, if you are not familiar with Dark Lords, it is learning curve, to be honest. And you need deck presence, graveyard presence, and timing for this kind of deck. With regards to Despiates, you just, um, whatever is shiny, you activate it. <laughs> don't, don't click anything with it shiny. Just read, guys, read. <laughs> anyway, so the criteria that I'm talking about is, yeah, we'll categorize the three decks that I'm gonna show you guys on its difficulty, power, protection or negation, destruction or removal, and also their consistency on the deck if they are still the same thing if you work on that on how many games. With regards to difficulty on the deck, if you are a returnee for um, the whole Yu-Gi-Oh thing or a new player, then using this deck is about 8 or 8.5 <laughs> over 10. Since of course you are gonna use Dark Lords and Dark Lords is hard I would say and it has its timings to be honest. Despias on the other hand are straightforward. Once it's on the field or if it's outside the field, you can still use its effect. With that, we go to power. So power of the deck is 8 over 10. It's almost all the time on your first turn, you, you can special summon the first Dark Lord with this deck. And of course, this will go on or extend to other monsters which you can special summon from your hand or from your graveyard. I would say this deck is 6 out of 10 for its protection or negation. Since you only have your first Dark Lord, um, your Quirtus, your Branded Opening, and your D Dramaturge, if ever everything is set up on the field. If that's set up, you're good for the game. You already have the advantage, but if not, then that's the problem. That's why I'm putting this on 6 over 10. So when it comes to destruction capability, if ever you have your Morning Star on your hand and you ever fusion summon it to your first Dark Lord, then it's good. There, uh, that's an automatic board wipe. That's um, perfect for clearing up boards. And if ever you have Super Poly, much better. It allows you to fusion summon your opponent's monster. But always remember, it's not always the case that they have Dark and Fairy monsters on their side of the field. That's why you have um, Mud Dragon present on your extra deck. Always! And lastly, when it comes to the consistency of the deck, yes, it does um, It does its job when it comes to summoning your first Dark Lord to the field and of course your um, fusion monsters in general. But always remember, um, branded opening locks you out to fusion summon only. So with regards to your links or your exe summon, that's out of the question. So let's move on to another one. So next we have here um, the Despia Dark Lords Albaz deck. So after the release of Despia and Master Duels, I've done some testings with some decks, and that means Invoke, Shadal, and even Dogmatica for um to be paired greatly with Despias. Um, so far, Albaz is one of those decks that's really sinking properly since, of course, there's a story behind Despia and Albaz and also Dogmatica, so that's why most of the cards support each other. So what I can say with this deck when it comes to difficulty is still the same, eight over ten since. You have Dark Lords in the mix. Um, with regards to power, it's 8.5 over 10 because you have your Albaz. You can summon your Albion, the, the Shrouded Dragon, or you can go with Titanic Lad. You have a lot of options to summon Fusion Monsters on your side of the field and also with your Starving Venom. And with regards to protection or negation, this will be still 6 because um, it didn't change. Your protection is still the same as the last, the last deck format. And of course, there's nothing or there's not much that change for your protection and negation on the cards. 
Now for your destruction and removal, you went up for um, 1 point, so that's 7 over 10. This is um, based on your extra decks, to be honest. So you have your Starving, your Dragostopelia, or your Predator Plant Monsters, Iron Dash, and your um, Fusion Dragon. It went up for uh, a little bit, just a little bit, just because it has the same thing as last time but with more um, fusion monsters. So I cut off a lot of Link Summons and also your Exes just for um, a fusion or more fusion type extra decks. And not to mention with regards to removal or uh, destruction, well just removal to be honest, since you have Albas on the mix, um, other than your Super Poly, it gives a lot of ways to uh, a lot of summons for your fusion monsters. But of course, please remember, once um, Albaz is negated on the field, you'll be a sitting duck with just Albaz on your side of the field. I won't go up um, to 8, just 7 because it has the same um, amount of cards. Although the changes is still just on your extra deck, which is you need to summon the correct monsters to your side of the field or you do need the specific combo to special summon your um, monsters from the extra deck. So that is why. So with regards to consistency, I would say it is 8 because it does what it does, just um, removes monsters from the field. But also remember, it's not always all the time that happens. So that is the criteria for this deck. Let's go on to the next one. So this is the, the last deck that I've created so far, or the recent deck that I've created so far. So this is the Despia Albaz Synchro. So this, I removed Dark Lords because like I said on my previous video, if you are going to use Dark Lords with Synchro and Despia, it's going to be more than 40 cards to be honest. And of course, having more than 40 cards will tend to break. Anyway, so Synchro. When it comes to difficulty, I would say it will be around 7 now because there's no Dark Lords at the mix. Um, why it just went down to 1, why it's not um, going down furthermore because of course you have your Synchro Monsters and Synchro Summoning Monsters um, takes a lot of effort. And of course it's not that easy because you have a lot of things to consider if you are summoning one monster to um, uh, combo it to a Synchro Monster. When it comes to power it, I would say it goes to 8.5 or 9 to, to be honest because not only you have your um, first Dark Lord and your Proskinion and your um, and also with regards to your other fusion monsters, you have your Syngirl which is the Baron de Flor and your other 3k monsters, um, the Chaos Ruler and Boral Sword. So next up we have your Protection and Negation. So Protection and Negation, I would say I, it went up to 8.5 over 10 just because you have your two um, Cyphering Gear Gammas and of course you have your Baron de Flo. And yes, this is really an advantage for you since you have a lot of negations for the deck and of course it will help you throughout the game. So next we have your Destruction or Removal. So Destruction or Removal, I would say it's 8 now because there are a lot of, um, for example, Barrel Sword and then Baron de Flo and also your um, Cyphering Gear Gammas. A lot of, a lot of negations and a lot of the same protection as the last time or the last few decks. And when it comes to the increase of difficulty power protection and negation and also the destruction capability, you would consider that consistency would be higher as well, but it's not. It went down to six over 10 because since you would notice or almost all of the cards are non-Despia cards, not always all the time, you'll have the same cards um, when you start a game. Sometimes you would break, sometimes you wouldn't, and you'll have a good combo. But like I said, you'll have Fallen of Albas, Aluber, and also your Diviner to summon your specific monsters from the, from the extra deck. And if you ever are in Platinum, you would understand that there are a lot of players that has Maxis, Ash Blossoms, Infinite Impermanence, and also Effect Veilers on their hand or uses those cards um, in their deck and also you can only normal summon once so um following the valbaz aluber and even designer sorry to say if, you, if that's negated then your turn is over and the game is over of course because some of the cases in platinum you only have one turn so now you might question what is the best deck that is going to be paired with uh, despia overall I would say Alves, Despia, Dark Lords are one of the best that I would that I've created so far since it has a lot of negations, removals are okay, protection are okay, and power is okay. Consistency, it went down to a point. The deck is still okay, it's still viable, and it got me to um, platinum to 
once <laughs> yeah i'm still going to platinum 3 at the moment with this deck and it's fun it's fun it's fun and yeah having that same amount of combos it's great it's grand and yeah it's really great to use this deck and that is it for today guys if you like the content please feel free to subscribe and of course thank you so much for watching and keep safe good luck have a great day to you guys peace out Bye bye